In this case study, we're going to be looking primarily at a type of portraiture called Fayum portraits. Uh, these were mummy portraits that were painted during the late Egyptian period. And the reason that we call them Fayum portraits is that most of them were found in an area of Egypt close to the Fayum o oasis. There's sort of a depression uh, to the west of the Nile Delta, to the west and a little south. And uh, there's a series of lakes there and communities, and many of these late period Roman mummies were found there. And uh, I'm showing you here a selection of these Fayum portraits. Uh, as you can see, they are painted on wood panel. Most of them are painted either, well, they tend to be painted either in encaustic, which is the technique we're going to pay attention to in this uh, particular case study. Um, some are painted in tempera. So with encaustic, what you're doing is you're suspending your pigment in melted beeswax. Sometimes that beeswax is mixed with other substances. It can be mixed with oil to form something that dries and hardens more slowly and can be worked for a longer period. Um, or it can be mixed with types of varnish and other things. Um, with tempera, on the other hand, you are mixing your paint with uh, some sort of a binder like egg yolk or egg white or whole egg uh, and painting with it that way. The more expensive portraits tended to be done with encaustic. Here we're looking at the portrait that was on the right in our image earlier and taking a closer look. We're looking at her from sort of a raking angle so that you can see some of the texture of the encaustic paint and then just a close-up of this young woman's face. And uh, one of the advantages of working in the encaustic medium is that, of course, beeswax is translucent. And depending on uh, how saturated it is with pigment, you can actually build up sort of semi-transparent layers of, of this paint and get sort of a luminous quality uh, that is a very good imitation of human skin and the way that light plays on human skin. And I think you can see that particularly in the close-up image on the right where we see all of the different shades in this young woman's face. Uh, you can also see a variety of different textures, little swirly patterns or little quick dabs or slashes made with the brush. When you work with encaustic, you have to work very quickly because it hardens uh, right on the brush almost the moment you take your brush out of the hot wax. And so you have to have a pretty good idea of what you're doing before you even grab your brush or the tool that you're working with. Um, you can heat the surface that you're painting on to some degree and by warming it up, extend the amount of time that you can paint, but you have to work very quickly and you tend to build up uh, sort of solid layers that end up having a bit of a sculptural effect because of just that buildup of the wax. So it's a, it's a really interesting way to work. Now we have a view and a detail of a male portrait, uh, another one of these Fayum mummy portraits. And I wanna point out a couple of things. First, uh, take a look at the relative state of disrepair on this particular work. Um, and because of the flaking paint on the surface, you can get a sense for uh, how thickly the layers build up on the wood surface. You can also uh, get a sense of how this would have been placed into the wrappings of the mummy. Um, only the face area and sort of the head and neck and uh, immediate shoulders were meant to actually be seen. The rest of this would be covered up in mummy wrappings. Um, and so this is just standing in for the face of the deceased. There's a real emphasis on the eyes in these. Um, in the ancient world, there were uh, widespread beliefs that eyes were the windows to the soul. And of course, in the Egyptian tradition, they believed that the soul lived on 
in the afterlife and needed a home to go back to in the form of the mummified body of the deceased and also other statues that would be provided. Um, and so perhaps these eyes are allowing particular access uh, for the Ka. Recently, works like these Fayum portraits have received a lot of scholarly and particularly scientific attention. And there have been a number of groups worldwide that have been analyzing these Fayum mummy portraits. Uh, there was a huge project in uh, Germany that, well, it was started in Germany that spread uh, also into Italy and into uh, parts of Egypt to Mount Sinai, for example, that was uh, a look at painting techniques for the representation of human flesh between about the year uh, 250 and 1200. Um, and they, they did these really in-depth analyses, including pigment analysis. And one of the things that I'm showing you here is uh, this is on the right, sort of an ultraviolet light uh, look at the painting that you see on the left. And when you expose certain pigments to UV light, they fluoresce. Um, and so here what they're doing is identifying the presence of Egyptian blue, which is a synthetic cobalt-based uh, glass pigment. Um, and it's, it does tend to fluoresce under those light conditions. A slightly more destructive way to study a painting, but one that gives a great deal of information, is to take uh, a cross-section of a layer of paint. This is usually done in an area very close to the edge of a painting or in an area that's already been damaged. And here you're seeing uh, sort of a microscopic view uh, of a cross section of paint. And you can see that there are at least three distinct layers. And again, you're, lo you're seeing it uh, analyzed under various types of light um, including, I think, x-ray uh, in the image on the bottom. When you zoom way into one of these encaustic portraits, one of these Fayum mummy portraits, you can see a lot of the individual colors that were uh, laid next to each other and on top of each other in order to create effects. And so here we're looking at uh, a woman's portrait and at a close-up of the way that her eye was painted. And in a moment, we'll see uh, a short clip that reproduces that technique. What we'll do now is look at the way that an eye, very much like the one we saw on the last slide, was painted. And this is something that was achieved through analysis of uh, paint sections and also just really close microscopic analysis of the painting. And so at, what I want you to notice is that almost all of the colors in this painting are ochre derived or ochre based colors. Um, so here even in the background, we have sort of a pinkish tone that could be uh, red ochre with a lot of white in it. Now we have this sort of buff tone that's yellow ochre with a lot of white. Now we have like a di uh, an orange ochre that's been lightened. Um, and then we're getting closer into sort of a red ochre, like a burnt sienna, but all of these are earth pigments. Uh, they're incredibly stable and light fast. They hold up over time very well. And now finally, as we start getting darker, you'll see that eventually the artist will bring in full black here, and then for that final pop, the white. This is our final slide in this case study, and I want you to notice the photo of the little steel tool uh, at the lower left. This is a reproduction of a, uh, an encaustic wax working tool that is based on the marks that were found on the painting that you see here. And as you can see on in the top two images, 
you see it's sort of straight on and then examined with raking light so that you get really high contrast imagery uh, that gives you a sense of sort of the topography of the painting. And then there's this wonderful uh, magnified view at the lower right in which you can see the diamond shapes that were created by the tool being pressed in to manipulate the wax. Metal tools like this could be heated up and used to uh, move around the wax on the surface of one of these paintings and to, to further uh, mix and move the paint uh, for different effects. You're going to be watching another video about works like this in which Marie Svoboda, who is a conservator at uh, the Getty Villa in California, will discuss a little bit more about ochre and the way that works like this were made.